Hiya, hello there, welcome to this week's Seconds Out. We've got a great show lined up for you, but then I say that every week, really, don't I? The guest this week is a young welterweight by the name of Denton Vassell. Very exotic name, Denton. Right. Welcome yes. to the show. Welcome. Although, officially, I've sort of come down to your workplace, so, so really, I'm your guest. Oh, you're welcome, anytime. Now, first mate. of all, uh, I've got to ask you this quality uh, nickname that you've developed Achilles. Achilles. Yeah. No, it's, um, it just means um, warrior, or oh, warrior spirit. You're not Basically, Greek, are you? No, not Greek. <laughs> but um, I think it goes to like how I fight as well. I mm. just come forward and then I just deliver the action constantly, you know. And it's a good way of um, for your opponents. It tires mm. them out a lot and give, gives you a good work rate. And it does it. It puts them off a bit when you put the rate work rate in. Mm. You know, when you put the pressure on them constantly, round after round, so it's backing off that one minute. Yeah. And you're coming at them constantly, it's like, gosh, when's this guy going to stop? And yeah. it, it can, it, psychologically, it can, it can defeat him that way as well. It's yeah. like, God, he's not going to stop, I might as well just give up now. Yeah. But also, it's good for the crowd. The, the, crowd, the crowd pay, like, money to see, ticket, the money to see for, for tickets and yeah. to watch the fights as well. So you want to give them a good show, you know what I mean? Now, I did see you fight down in, uh, on last London. Saturday, down in yeah. London. That was a cracker. Because Bob told me about you before, and I'd met you down here before, right. and uh, he told me you were one to watch out for, and I think you raised a few eyebrows, didn't you? Yeah, I hope, I hope so anyway, I hope so, because um, even though he's, like, he's a journeyman, and he was tough, he knew what he was doing, mm. and um, I'm glad that I went like, the distance like that, because I, I, I can prove I can go distance, I'm fit enough, mm. I mean, I won't even breathe in every years. The other guy was just totally shattered, you know. Not a scratch on you either, is it? Not a scratch on me. I mean, I've just come to this, just giving it to him constantly and he was just, at one point he was backing off. Yeah. You know, try to dance around me, but I just kept calling him off, putting the pressure on him. And um, i just done damage, basically, you know. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I mean, we're talking about your style, I was talking to Bob the other day. Yeah. I don't want to get, you, you know, too big for your boots, but oh, you, right. you mentioned the word Tyson. You know, I'm on about style now. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, because... Um, it helps me a lot because as you see, I'm only small. I'm not exactly six foot odd. I'm only what five foot seven. So I use it to my advantage. And um, the fighters that I fight will be telling me so they utilise the shoulders a lot by punching down. With me, I, because I'm small, I can go underneath you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, under the jabs, the right, the right. I've seen you using that as well. Yeah. In, uh, inspiring. Yeah, it does. It, can't, it does. It does work. It does work. Honestly, you just got to believe in yourself and just keep working on it. And yeah. it does work. And there's nothing wrong with being five foot seven, you know. No, no. I, I do. I honestly love it. I love fighting guys bigger than me because mm. it's just so easy, and you can just go underneath them. And then with me, I can utilize my legs as well as my shoulders. Yeah. So I, and with a good, with a right technique as well, I can deliver an harder punch. Yeah, I've seen I you mean, doing that when you're shadowing as well. I've seen you going yeah. down quite a lot as well. It does work, believe me. Does Bob, work. Bob's famous for putting his fighters through it. Yeah. But from what I hear, you're one of them that just likes to train anyway. Yeah, I do. You've got to love to tra train. You can't just do it for the sake of it, and you can't do it because someone sold you to. So you've got to do it because you want to do it. It's, mm. it's in your heart. It's, it's yourself. You want to do it. I mean, Bob, Bob's an excellent trainer, man. He can, you can't half push for the limits, as you've seen him yeah. do before. I mean, he's got some, we've got some great fighters in there, really good fighters. We've got... Alan the Bembe, we've got um, Rocco, Andy Morris, mm. um, we, had Ab we had Abdul, and Ethan's coming along, he's good, and a few other fighters. Yeah, some good fighters. Then. And Bob, Bob can push you to the limits, he can, he's, he's an excellent trainer, and this gym's good, that's why I picked it, because I knew it had like, good fighters in this gym, mm. and I knew I'd get far if I just stuck at it. Now, what's your diet like? Because um, you mentioned before we come on air that you're, uh, your dad's Jamaican, so yeah. he, he does a lot of cooking for you. Yeah, my dad, um, he's, he's from Jamaica and he cooks. I mean, my mum cooks as well. Mm. And I just use, I eat that a lot of that food, that Jamaican food, all the rice, chicken. You've got, you got a good physique. Yeah, I mean... I'm not being fruity now, Dan, so I'm just saying, yeah. Because uh, no. there was rumours that you were um, a bit of a bodybuilder, but that was just... No, that's a load of rubbish. So I, I just, before the boxing, I was doing a lot of fitness training anyway. Mm. But yeah, my dad, my dad's cooking comes into it a lot. Mm. I mean, you got to eat the right foods. You can't be eating like rubbish and then doing an hard work, especially coming to this gym yeah. and then thinking you're going to improve because you're going to have to eat a lot healthy protein, mm. carbs. And yeah, my dad's cooking really does help. Really well, I, does. I wanted a bit of uh, a bit of advice, so I went down to Better Bodies to see uh, Kerry Kay's 
little man into there, mate. CMP's a sports nutrition company that we uh, supply protein powders, vitamins, minerals, uh, recovery drinks, special, special nutrients that um, athletes need. Um, a lot of people can't go to the trouble of getting all the nuts, the seeds, the oils, the, uh, the special nutrients required, especially athletes who haven't got the time, the energy, and they haven't got the inclination. We make different um, drinks. Um, some drinks are just protein on their own. Some drinks are meal replacements, so it's a complete meal. You're in control of your calories. Um, I'm the only company in the world that gets my um, protein powders cold processed so that they've not been denatured in their manufacturing. Plus, I was the first company in England to put probiotics in my powders, which you now see on television is quite healthy, uh, bifida, saffodifers. I was putting them in the protein powders back in 98, you know, so plus we've got weight gain drinks. We do recovery drinks, they, you know, it's a full spectrum of nutrition. We help a lot of athletes, bodybuilders, powerlifters, uh, rugby players, um, track and field players, you know, um, um, you know, I'm quite proud of our success as a sports nutrition company in Denton. We, uh, we export to 38 countries, we've got offices in Los Angeles, so, you know, boxing's only a small side of us. There's only the media and some of the public out there that seems to be going on about Ricky's weight. Ricky's happy with what he does in the off-season, Billy Graham and myself are. Um, you know, if you lead a Buddhist life 12 months of the year, you burn out quicker. Uh, Ricky switches off to switch back on again. And uh, everybody goes on about Ricky's weight and all that, but the day Ricky walks in the gym, he becomes a Buddhist monk and he does everything 100% and that's genuine. He keeps producing the goods, um, he makes the weight every time, first time on the scales. And, you know, we haven't got a problem with Ricky's weight, but everyone else seems to have a problem with Ricky's weight. Once a fighter's made the weight, in reality, he's probably not eaten for eight hours, so his body's like blotting paper. Yeah. So he's ready for glycogen, uh, with carbohydrates, he's ready for nutrients. So rather than put food into him immediately, and it has to be broken down and converted to blood glucose, you might as well put the finished product in. So the first couple of drinks uh, after a weigh-in would be a uh, Pro Recover, which is a specific drink, and we'd add some uh, dextrose, and um, then that's, that's been absorbed very quickly by the body. And then maybe the third, fourth and fifth meal of that day could be then food, you know. That was, uh, that was pretty nice as well. I was going to sample uh, a strawberry one as well, Denson, but I thought I'd just go for the <laughs> chocolate. And he, and he gave me a few as well, which was yeah. nice. Oh, yeah, have you tried right, them? Do you take any of them at all? No, no, don't, you know. Just me dad's cooking, basically. Just, that's all I do. Just eat me dad's cooking and just be disciplined not to touch your, you know, that's chocolate it. or sweet. Maybe we can all just go around to your dad's then some night. Yeah. Any time. Me and all the viewers, would that be all right? If you want, any time. <laughs> you won't mind. Yeah, get a bit of chicken on the go. Right, listen, uh, you're going to stick about, aren't you? Yeah. That's the rules you see if you're coming in to stay for the whole show. I'll be here, I'll be here. we take a short break now. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. See you in a minute. Welcome back to part two of Seconds Out. My guest this week is a young welterweight. You don't mind me saying young, do you? No, no, no I don't mind at all. Fog, you know? <laughs> what are you now, 22, is it? 22, yeah. 22, and what, what are the plans now? You've had a, a, you had a good win last week. Yeah, I had a very good win. Um, well, I'll just have to see what, what comes my way, really. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not going to rush, but take one step at a time. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to enjoy Christmas now and New Year's Eve with my family and friends, yeah. and um, just see what comes. Stay in the gym, tick over. And just see what comes my way, really. How long have you been a pro now, then? Ooh, not long. I've done started this year about since July. Mm. I mean, I had my first debut fight um, in Bolton Arena on the 2nd of September. Right. And um, done a, had a successful win and last so week in London. Two, so out, I was two on, out of two. Yeah, two out of two. But I'm thankful that I'm on good big shows like this because it gets people to recognise yeah. me and I'm very, uh, like, yeah, yeah. It. It's going to help really isn't it, if, uh, if you get on these big shows. Yeah, it does, it that, does um, help. It's, you, you know what I mean? You're on tele, mm. and everyone's getting to see you and That's getting it. to notice you a lot better. And also, when you want, um, you were just before mm. Amir Khan, weren't you? So yeah. Obviously, so a lot of people are taking the seats. That's what I mean. That's and everyone, help, everyone's, everyone's ready to see Amir Khan, and then yeah. I come on before he comes on. So and put on I a good get, show as well. Yeah, That's got the main a good thing, show. So got to like steal a bit of a crowd attention. You know. Now we're going to have a look at some some more. Professional action now, but it's a mate of yours, Mark, who trains down here. Mark Nelson. Mark Nelson. Yeah, he had yeah. a fight in Stoke on Wednesday, last Wednesday. Yeah, and he's successful. I mean, he's a, he's a strong guy, yeah. and you'd think by looking at him, he's just going to be a strong guy. But he can he can move. Yeah. He can honestly honestly say he can move, and he's good at the body shots, and he's good at turning you. 
he's got he's got some good skills. Yeah. Honestly, he's really good. He's coming along. I mean, I, I spar with him, mm. and he can hit. <laughs> he's believe big, me, he's he can lad, hit. Yeah. I mean, that's why another thing about spar with him because he's a he's a big lad, and it helps yeah. me move my head. And I've got to move my head because. Get hit by him. <laughs> yeah, you know, man, you'll well, know you about spar, it. Like you spar with Rocco as well, don't you? Yeah, Rocco's another exceptional fighter as well. He can, he can stick that jab out. Mm. <laughs> it does, that's another thing, it winds me up when you get the jab coming at you. But with my style, I've got yeah. to learn to get underneath. Mm. And it does help, like I said. But Rocco, Rocco's a good. So you're good. getting with big hitters and you're also getting with yeah. lads like yourself that are quite small. Yeah, faster. so I'm used to, yeah, I'm used to the speed and I'm also used to the big power. Mm. Like Ali, Ali Nabembe, another guy I spar with. He's got power. He's well, got power he? and speed. So he's, he's really top to spar with. And I'll be sparring with him soon because he's got his next fight against Kevin Anderson in February. Yeah, so he should be all going well. Right, OK, well, let's, uh, again, you can see it down there. Let's have a look at the, um, at the action from Stoke last week. Okay. I to mix it over him in a second. Should have just kept on me boxing and boxed him. Uh, I think I did that in the last, last two rounds anyway. Uh, for the second one, he come forward, caught me with a few. I rocked the box the wrong fight for him, but got there in the end, like you say. You had, had a lovely shot in one of the earlier rounds. It must have hurt him. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Good few jabs as well. Yeah, yeah. That's what we've been working on in the gym, and uh, that's what we did. Good shouts from the crowd as well. You've yeah, the good crowd here. Friends. Yeah, they've got a good following. I mean, good following here. Mr. Wally Dixon Wally here. Dixon here. Promoter. 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 Let me tell you, he's only had two fights. And after this fight, you know, he's doing well. Are you happy with it tonight, Wally? Yeah, yeah and there was a little bit of things that was wrong. But we'll get them all right with Bob. Good work rate, right, though. You know, his game is a talent, isn't it? You can't say no more for the kid. Yeah, like I said. It's a good win. Big, big hit. Oh, you can feel it too, it hurts. He's a strong, I know, yeah. I bet. I'll take your word for that. <laughs> I ain't going to find out. I enjoy it. I love sparring him, though. It's top. It makes you move. Well, what weight is he then? Because he's... I think he's a light heavyweight. Mm. He's a light heavyweight. Is that, is that the norm for you to get in with these Well, types? not really, but I just like... I, I want that because I want to train. I, to be honest, I want to be the best. I want to be the yeah. best fight, so... I want, to make, I want the train to be so hard. Yeah. And it's helping me move. You get jumping every, in the ring with an heavyweight, you're going to think, yeah. move your head. Definitely, you know what I mean? Definitely. So 
I'm using my head and I do well. You obviously know Wally as well, the promoter yeah. who, who um, looks Wally after Dixon. Yeah, Wally yeah. Dixon. He's an all right guy. I caught well. up with him last week and he's got some unbelievable stories and brilliant memorabilia. Here he is. Right, Wally, you're, you're one of the names that pops up quite a lot. You've been mentioned on the show a fair bit because you're a local promoter, is that right? It is, yeah. you got um, a few lads on your books. Who, who have you got exactly? Uh, Johnny Rockhorsey, Mark Nielsen and an heavyweight called uh, Matthew Ellis. All right, are they all at Bob Shannon's gym? No, two's at Bob's and one's in Blackpool. So you started putting on dinners. I mean, mm. well, I know I've come down and filmed a couple of them. Um, and how, how does it come about? What made you come up with that sort of idea? Well, other folk was doing it, so we thought, well, we might as well have a go. So what we did, we just went and seen the agents and started booking them and started selling the tickets. And from there, it just escalated the way it has done. And you've had some just huge names looking around the office. You can see what sort of people you've had over here. Um, a lot of American Yeah, players. Larry Holmes we had, uh, we had over. Yeah. About two and a half, nearly three years ago. Good. Joe Fraser just recent. Tribute to Oma Deli when we brought Spinks and all them over. That's right. Next year we're hoping to get Marvin Agler, uh, Roberto Ogenan, Lennox Lewis, you know, and just keep going on that way so we can get. That's, that's absolutely amazing and names are just rattled off then. Yeah, just... we've had a lot of the other names, haven't we? Yeah. You know, like Larry Holmes might be coming back on the scene uh, in March. So we might bring get Lally Holmes again. Who's been your favourite so far that you brought over here? There's been a few of them really, but my, the best was Mike, innit? Mike Tyson. And we've got him again now uh, on Friday at the Baby Grand, opening that. And also again at the Baby Grand on Saturday. The tickets are £200 each. Uh, that includes a champagne reception and a photograph took with Mike. There's also cabaret on, like we build it, the Christmas bananas, and I think that's what it'll be. Mm. So that's pretty exciting, bringing well, be a, Mike Tyson yeah, to Manchester. Yeah, do, yeah, yeah. And the dues are only small, there's only 200 people at these dues, not like the other dues when it happened. And there were six and 800 people there. With the 200, it'll be more intimate. They'll all get a photograph. And it should be a good night with all the cabaret and everything that we've got on. So what's next? What's next in the pipeline then in the new year for Wally Dixon promotions? Uh, the next in the pipeline now is to get a big name again and start off in the uh, back end of February. Also, there's some open uh, boxing we've got on and also some dinner shows, boxing dinner shows to start next year because we're going to start doing them at the Piccadilly. Mm. The Piccadilly never had the, uh, the old okay to put the British Boxing Board of Control boxing on. They did it years and years ago with Nat Basso and Jack Trickett and all them and then since then no one's ever minded with it. So now we've been to them and got it all sorted so that next year we can start now doing that mm. by putting shows on. So we'll be doing dinner shows with the celebrities and we'll also be doing the dinner shows with boxing on, say, four fights on. He's, uh, he's quite a character dentist, isn't he, Wally? Oh, Wally Dixon, yeah, he's a good black bloke. He's funny. That's what boxing's all about, people like him, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, makes the world go round. He does great for about. Manchester fighters as well, doesn't he? Yeah, he really yeah, he gives, them, he gives them people a chance, you know. Mm. Gives them a chance and need it, because there's some of them talent about that's not even been discovered yet, you know. And then dinners that he does. Oh, no. Right? I know, I've been to dinner shows. <laughs> They're nice, I like them dinners. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not about the food, I don't know about the people there, but the food's nice as well. Yeah, when you lose that weight, though, oh, God, you eat anything. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're just talking about big lads there, and I've got an interview with uh, a chap that came over a couple of weeks ago to Manchester um, by the name of Tim with a spoon. It's a, it's a name that everyone knows, really, yeah, yeah. especially Frank Bruno. Oh, I know. But he was a, he was a nice guy, uh, and this is what he had to say. People in America are, are very interested in what's going on over here. Right now, currently, is four Russian heavyweight champs. So that's like waking people up saying, whoa, what's up? But I've been coming over here since I fought Frank Bruno. Yeah. I've, been, I've been like, this like, has been the second family. You know, when I retired, I felt the need to help the fighters that don't know which way to go. And that's, that's a job that I gave myself. And um, um, it can be a lucrative job in the future, you know, when you just give first and they'll give back later. And I, and I bet you, if you give, you will receive, you know. I ruined my potential. I didn't reach my full potential because I was worried about fighters being ripped off, me getting ripped off. And, and you know, so I figured, hey, let me do a lot of fi out fighting this way, helping fighters out, you know. But when I was fighting, you know, I just, I just kept on talking about, hey, how they were taken from me, how they taken from everybody. That's why I couldn't reach my full potential. Now, I beat Frank Bruno. I beat him. But, I, you know, that's, that was one fight I wanted to get up for. I wanted to get up for that. I, wanted to, I dreamed of winning a heavyweight championship or defending my title in somebody else's backyard. I did. I, I had a vision with that, and I dreamed about that. And I think all fighters that put all the 
uh, 10, 15 years in the boxing game to contribute back. If they got jobs or if they're wealthy, you know, that's how we're going to bring boxing better. I hear people saying that, that boxing is dying down. But I'm, I'm, I'm optimistic. It's always good to me. You know, a bad fight might be a good fight to me because I love, I love the fight game. So, you know, that's what I'm doing. That's why I'm here. We've had, uh, we've had some good names on here, Dan Sim, tell you. I bet you have. And uh, you know when you make it big, you'll still come on the show, won't you? Oh, we're still going. Anytime, anytime, mate. Who, who's your heroes then? Obviously, as you know, Mike Tyson, mm. Rocky Marciano, mm. Jack Dempster, the Manassa Marla, yeah. and Joe Frazier. Like yeah, him a lot. He was over as well yeah. the other week, wasn't he? Was Did that? you get to meet him? No, I'm not no. I'm gutted, but I will one day. I Ty will. Tyson's in the country at the moment as well. I know, I'm dying to meet him. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking to meet him. You had a, quite a short amateur career, didn't you? Oh yeah, the dead short. I mean, it's because of me, me style basically. I've had that when I first started. I just normally had that style to come forward, mm. and I had everyone come up to me saying, "You'll do better in the pro game. You, you should, you should do better." And um, I did find it a bit hard because it's like the amateurs, you jump in. That's mm. when you jump back out. It's like quick with the points, but with the pro professional, it's, it's more time consuming. Mm. And you take, you pick your shots, and the body shots count as well in the pro game. Yeah, but. Like with the amateur, I'm quite, I'm thankful for um, Jimmy Lewis Jimmy and Lewis, um, yeah. Lee Ains to give me that chance with, in the pro in the amateur game. So, yeah. and um, to some thanks as well to bringing me on. Well, um, I hope your career carries on to go as well as it started. Anyway, and oh, from I'm what I hear, I think you know, I think you're going to be I top hope. stuff soon. I hope so. I hope so. Fingers crossed. And good luck with your next fight. And uh, thanks best. for coming on the show, Denson. Nice one, mate. All the best. Right, that's all we've got time for now. I'll see you again next week with more top stars from the local boxing scene. See you soon.